Good afternoon, everyone. The MPC reviewed uh, current and evolving macroeconomic and financial conditions and decided to keep the policy rate uh, unchanged at 6% while maintaining a neutral monetary policy stance. Uh, this was by a majority of 5 to 1. The MPC reiterated its commitment to keep headline inflation close to 4%. We expressed concern about the loss of momentum of growth in the early months of 2017-18, especially the persisting weakness in manufacturing. The MPC noted that the implementation of the GST appears to have rendered short-term prospects uncertain, possibly delaying the revival of investment activity, which is already hampered by stressed balance sheets of banks and corporations. On a positive note, however, core industries posted a robust growth of 4.9% in August. The manufacturing PMI moved into expansion zone in August and September. The teething problems linked to the GST may get resolved relatively soon, allowing growth to accelerate in the second half of 2017-18. The outlook for agriculture and allied activities is favorable and services sector performance has improved markedly with many indicators pointing to further strengthening in the months ahead. Over the rest of the year, household consumption demand may get a boost from upward salary and allowances revisions by state governments for their civil servants. On the downside, a faster than expected rise in input costs and lack of pricing power may put pressure on corporate margins, thereby affecting value added by industry. Taking into account these factors, the projection of real GVA growth for 2017-18 has been revised down to 6.7% from the August 2017 projection of 7.3% with the risks evenly balanced. On the other hand, the MPC observed that CPI inflation has risen by around 2 percentage points since our last meeting. These price pressures have coincided with an escalation of global geopolitical uncertainty and heightened volatility in financial markets. Although the domestic food price index looks, looks largely stable, generalized momentum is building on prices of items excluding food, especially emanating from crude oil, some price revisions in the wake of the GST implementation, and the possibility of fiscal slippages. Accordingly, the MPC expects inflation to rise from its current level and range between 42 to 4.6% in the second half of this fiscal year, which includes the house rent allowance by the centre. Factors that impart upside risks to this trajectory are the implementation of farm loan waivers and salary and allowances, award of the seventh pay commission by states, and potential second round effects on account of that. However, adequate food stocks and effective supply management by the government may keep food inflation under check. The MPC was of the view that recent structural reforms will likely be growth augmenting over the medium to long term by improving the business environment, enhancing transparency, and increasing formalization of the economy. The Reserve Bank continues to work towards the resolution of stressed corporate exposures in bank balance sheets, which should start yielding dividends over the medium term. It reiterated, it reiterated, however, that it is imperative to revive investment activity, which in turn should revive the demand for bank credit by industry. Recapitalizing public sector banks adequately will ensure that credit flows to the productive sectors are not impeded and growth impulse is not restrained. In addition, measures need to be undertaken to support growth and achieve a faster closure of the output gap including restarting stalled investment projects, particularly in the public sector, enhancing ease of doing business, including by further possible simplification of the GST, and ensure faster rollout of the affordable housing program with time-bound single window clearances and rationalization of excessively high stamp duties by states. I will shortly turn to my fellow deputy governors to explain the various developmental and regulatory policy measures announced today but before doing so, I would like to draw attention to two measures which are aimed at improving the reach of financial services. The first one relates to the use of prepaid payment instruments 
The Reserve Bank had issued guidelines for issuance and operations of prepaid payment instruments in April 2009 in order to foster an orderly development of the PPI ecosystem. It has been decided to rationalize the operational guidelines with a view to encouraging comp competition and innovation and strengthening st safety and security of operations, besides improving customer grievance redressal mechanisms. In line with the vision for payment and settlement systems in the country, the revised framework will pave the way for bringing interoperability into usage of PPIs. Interoperability amongst KYC-compliant PPIs shall be implemented within six months. At the same time, it has been reported that banks are discouraging or turning away senior citizens and differently abled persons from availing banking facilities in branches. Notwithstanding the need to push digital transactions and use of ATMs, it is imperative to be sensitive to the requirements of senior citizens and differently abled persons. It has been decided to instruct banks to put in place explicit mechanisms for meeting the needs of such persons so that they do not feel marginalized. Ombudsmen are also being advised to pay heed to complaints in this context. Thank you. I'll now request Deputy Governor uh, Viral Acharya. Uh, thank you, Governor, and good afternoon, everyone. Household inflation expectations have been steadily getting anchored down as they are adapting to the realized inflation trajectory. However, these expectations still remain relatively high and are also manifested in the continuing high level of rural and non-rural wage growth. Recent headline inflation prints have risen substantially from historic lows and in a broad-based manner. Uh, in addition, as the governor pointed out, oil price risk and global market volatility have risen materially. In such a scenario, it is important for the Reserve Bank to persist steadfastly with its objective of keeping medium-term inflation within a striking distance of the target rate of 4%. The recent loss of momentum in growth uh, seems to have energized quite a lively debate. Uh, it is too early, however, in my view, and real-time activity indicators do not yet paint a clear picture to be able to separate the transient component of this one-quarter loss of momentum from the gradual decline in overall growth that has taken hold since the Q1 of 2016-17. The longer-term trend is best explained by the deleveraging underway in the heavily indebted parts of the corporate sector and in poor credit growth at public sector banks given they have uh, inadequate capital relative to impending losses on their legacy assets. Uh, on the bright side, uh, corporate credit risk profile is showing some signs of improving gradually. The large distressed borrowers are being directed to the insolvency and bankruptcy code, and efforts are underway to concretely address public sector bank health. These structural changes will take some time to revive the affected parts of the economy teething problems or at least the uncertainty facing the GST rollout should also resolve in a few months. Uh, in the meantime, given the inflation outlook, uh, there did not seem much room for monetary policy adjustment. Uh, several market-friendly reforms have been proposed in Part B to pursue our other objectives in the meantime. These include the setting up of a high-level task force on public credit registry. The composition uh, is now uh, complete and the report will be out in April 2018. Framework for authorizing electronic trading platforms uh, for uh, securities that are under RBI's regulations. Proposal for foreign exchange trading platform for retail users to ensure that they get better pricing. Further operational flexibility to non-resident importers and exporters to enable more of the currency hedging market to move onshore. Comprehensive review of various FPI policies for April 2018 and beyond, and measures to improve settlement of short sales transactions in GSEX to avoid the kind of squeeze scenarios that we had uh, in March and April this year. The Reserve Bank also remains committed to improving the transmission of monetary policy from banks and non-bank finance companies to borrowers. Let me turn it over to DJ Vishwanathan to present the developments on this and other fronts. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Dr. Acharya. Uh, taking from uh, what Dr. Acharya said, last time we had uh, alluded to the stickiness of the base rate uh, and most sticky vis-a-vis the MCLR and it talked in terms of setting up a 
committee to go through the entire mechanism of base, base rate and MCLR with, with strengthening the tra mounted transmission. So the committee has submitted its report and that's going to be based on the website. One of the major recommendations is to move towards an external benchmark as the basis to determine interest rates. And uh, the, uh, based on the uh, feedback that we'll get from the market on this report, we'll take a further call on this. But in the meantime, we did speak to the banks on the stickiness of base rate because we were concerned about that because the last part of uh, exposures was still based on the base rate. So you, you would have seen a few banks have kind of marginally brought down their base rate as well in the meantime. Hopefully, once the report and its actions are taken, we'll have a much better transmission in the market. Second is, uh, you know, we had uh, this legal uh, entity identified as something that was the post-global financial crisis reform. Uh, progressively, we want to use the credit data to be linked to this legal entity identifier. Uh, therefore, we are proposing to mandate that the banks should ask for the legal ent entity identifier from large borrowers. And we'll do it in a calibrated manner so that over a period of time, but in a time-bound manner, all large credits, say above five, rupees 5 crores, are uh, you know, covered by this LEI. What it will do is we'll, able to, we'll be able to get an expo, uh, a proper idea of the group exposure and that will enable us to get a handle on the credit concentration risk and mitigate them going forward. Uh, uh, something that's been waiting in the wings for a long that's coming out today, uh, the P2P NBFC regulations. 18 September, the government notified P2P NBFC as an NBFC activity. So we are coming out with the regulations today. Uh, one important feature that I want to highlight there is that we, we are not allowing the P2P platforms themselves to take any exposure because internationally wherever there have been failures, it's happened because the P2Ps themselves were lending. Here there are platforms who will enable by lenders and creditors to come, uh, borrowers to come into the platform and avail the facility. Uh, uh, this we expect will target uh, what, what I would call as the missing middle in the credit ladder, the kind of borrowers who are not covered by the MFI and the borrowers who may be higher credit risk for the banks. So some, some the kind of borrowers in between are the likely beneficiaries of this scheme. We hope that this will be a major shift in the crowdfunding system that we, have, we want to put in place in India. Uh, already there are some operators in this field. The regulations provide for a transition so that they are able to transit to the new regulations in a proper manner. Uh, the uh, uh, cooperative banks, the non-scheduled cooperative banks, are not, uh, they have not been able to open accounts with RBI because of the tighter norms that we had put in place. What we believe is that the licensed bank should have an access to central bank account opening uh, facility. So we are uh, relaxing the norms, simplifying the norms rather so that all the urban cooperative banks will be able to open accounts with RBI. What it does is, otherwise today they are maintaining the bonds which are not able to have uh, account with RBI, they maintain the CRR with a scheduled commercial bank or a, a cooperative bank, that we will be able to now divert to an RBI itself. So that directions on that, we have already issued to the offices to simplify the procedure. Uh, so that's it uh, from our side. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, there are two to three important announcements, rather market-friendly announcements pertaining to the uh, security market. Uh, both for the government securities and uh, for the state government loans. First, I'll start with the government securities market. Uh, as you know, for quite some time, Government of India and Reserve Bank of India, they have been trying to broad-base the investor base, especially ensure that there is a robust uh, retail participation in the GSEC market. Uh, you would recall that several steps have been taken in this direction, which include the modification of the Government Securities Act, uh, 2006, introduction of the odd lot in the NDS home secondary market, improvement in settlement mechanism, retailing of the GSEX by PDs, and introduction of the non-competitive bidding in primary auctions. You would also recall that in the Union Budget 2016-17, Honorable Finance Minister had uh, made an announcement that Reserve Bank will facilitate the participation of the retail uh, investors both in the primary and the secondary market. The secondary market, it has already happened through the mechanism of the stock exchanges since we have already permitted the participation of the DMART account holders into our NDS home platform. Now we are turning to our attention to the primary market. The stock, I, I, after uh, discussing with the SEBI, now it has been decided that in addition to the banks and the PDH, 
the stock exchanges will act as the facilitators or the aggregators they will collect the bids from the retail investors and uh, bid in the uh, platform uh, in the non competitive segment of the government securities market so this will broaden the investor uh, base uh, so far as the state government development loans uh, are concerned you could uh, you would have observed that in recent times the state government borrowing has increased uh, significantly uh, and it has outpaced the growth in the center's uh, market borrowing. The reason is the states are increasingly turning to market borrowing as a means of financing their fiscal deficit. And uh, the uh, high growth in STL borrowing is attributed, and in recent years, there is a greater reliance on market borrowing, as I mentioned. As a result, each auction of STL involves participation of 15 to 20 states for an amount of say around say 26,000 crore. This has given rise to concerns on elevated supply and consequent adverse impact on the yields. So therefore we have decided there is a need to further develop the liquidity in the STL market. We will do that by uh, in, instead of the extent practice of holding the auctions for the state development loans on alternate weeks, we will uh, do it on weekly basis. And uh, this weekly auction will likely to have a salutary impact on the yields as issuance sizes will be smaller and the issuances will be evened out, thereby it will be more uh, I mean, uh, palatable to the market. Uh, sec additionally, uh, in order to contain the rollover risk, uh, in case of the state government loans, we will go for uh, I mean, uh, uh, active consolidation of the SDLs through buybacks, switches, and reissuances, which will cut down the rollover risk. There is another aspect which has been engaging the attention of Reserve Bank for some time. It is important that the auction of the state development loan, given the size, uh, increasing size of uh, the SDLs, this is sensitive to the fiscal position of the individual states. Uh, this helps financially sound states to borrow at a cheaper rate and prevents the cross subsidization. Uh, the present SDL yield, even though it is um, uh, auction based, is not reflective of the risk asymmetries among the various states. So RBI uh, will announce necessary steps in this regard during the next uh, 12 months. We'll unveil all the steps in a calibrated manner that we are going to take. To start with, we have uh, decided that the high frequency data relating to the state finances of the state finances that is already available with uh, us will be displayed on our uh, uh, website. This will be in a standardized format so that it will facilitate peer-to-peer -peer comparison. The other steps will come in due course uh, during a period of 12 months in a time-bound manner. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kanungo. We'll take a few questions. Uh, we'll start with business standard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, there are some discussions about uh, uh, fiscal stimulus package by the government. What's RBI's take on this? Um, you know, uh, given that the general government fiscal deficit, in other words, of the state and centers, uh, uh, the state and center uh, government's uh, accounts combined, uh, given that is already in the region of 6% of GDP, uh, our national fiscal stance can hardly be described as tight. Uh, in other words, we should be very cautious lest fiscal actions undercut macroeconomic stability. Hindu business line. getting a little bit higher. So does that mean that, you know, there is no scope for a rate cut going forward, actually? You discount it. And one, one more question. No, about. let me answer. One question at a time. So um, uh, what we have done is that you are right that our projection has gone up compared to, the, compared to August, uh, and the range is now 4.2 to 4.7. That includes the HRA. Uh, um, um, adjustment that is a that is basically a statistical uh, um, uh, uh, it's a statistical uh, top up if you will uh, on the housing component of uh, CPI. Uh, what the MPC has said is that uh, we will be watching incoming data carefully, uh, and uh, there are upside risks which we have enunciated. Uh, there are some things which may mitigate these risks. Uh, so we will basically have to wait and watch uh, on how the evolution of, of uh, inflation takes place over the next six to seven months uh, in terms of what happens and, and, and our projections. 
but as you know that uh, inflation has been volatile uh, uh, within two months it did uh, did increase by two percentage points uh, so so we'll see what happens Wall Street Journal Yes, sir. So you have uh, mentioned that in the second half the growth may improve, but the private investment is still down. So what will be the main triggers for the improvement in the growth? Uh, one thing is that uh, there are uh, factors that have affected growth in the second quarter of this year. Uh, some of those will dissipate. Uh, the, uh, in the recent days, the high-frequency indicators uh, many of them uh, suggest uh, that uh, that growth is in the uptick. Um, the core IIP, which was released yesterday, was at 4.9%. Uh, in the second quarter, the services sector has been showing a healthy growth rate. Uh, so there is the possibility that, uh, that, that, you know, the cyclical upturn will happen in the next two quarters. Uh, but overall, the growth this year has been degraded. Uh, from 7.3 to 6.7. Use. Yeah, as uh, DG Vishwanathan pointed out, the internal group was set up to ensure that uh, the base rate and the uh, MCLR rates, which are used as the benchmarks for the floating rate loans by the uh, by the banks and non-bank finance companies, that these adjust with uh, monetary policy and uh, changing yields in the Indian uh, bond markets. Uh, I would say the primary recommendation of the report and it's going to be put up later today after close of business uh, for feedback, uh, is that it's going to propose three possible benchmarks, three external benchmarks to which uh, such lending could be tied to going forward. We think that uh, internal benchmarks such as the base rate or the MCLR uh, based on uh, data seem to give banks a very high amount of discretion, a lot of factors that uh, are flexible for them to ensure that the lending rates can be kept high even if monetary policy is going down an accommodative path. So in order to address this, we think it's time to move to how it works in most other countries, which is to have these rates tied to external benchmarks. It will create a fair bit of transparency for the borrowers. They can just compare two loans and see which is at a lower spread uh, because the benchmark will be the same. Uh, it leaves open which of these benchmarks should be used, and uh, we welcome feedback on that. Uh, the second important uh, point I would stress is that uh, it suggests that the interest rate resets, which are right now at annual frequency, creating potentially a one-year lag in transmission, uh, that these be changed on all floating rate loans uh, to, uh, to quarterly resets. So, you know, the transmission would be much faster once the monetary policy changes. Uh, the last thing I would say is that it proposes that this happen in a fairly time-bound manner so that monetary policy can have its uh, impact on the economy. Thank you. Governor? This is Govardhan from the Economic Times. Uh, the monetary policy report forecasts uh, inflation at 4.5% in uh, Q4 of 2019. And the report talks about uh, 100 points, uh, 100 basis points addition to uh, if the states also implement the allowances. Does that mean that we are effectively looking at 5.5 percent by March 2019, uh, and uh, add fiscal slippages to that? That essentially means that we are completely uh, off uh, the rate cut scenario uh, okay, till March 2019, irrespective of the growth rate. You know, as uh, as this. Uh, report um, uh, this resolution and previous resolutions have uh, have indicated that uh, that there is an uncertainty bound around all these uh, uh, and uh, and while there are upside risks there are also downside risks um, there might be some reversals of commodity prices which is a possibility uh, food inflation continues to be kept under control 
so I, you know, it is it is equally wrong to prejudge either way uh, how these things uh, these things will evolve. What we have done is to lay out the risks uh, which could materialize with varying probability. Bloomberg Quint. Uh, Governor, uh, can we uh, request a little bit more clarity on the PSU uh, recapitalization issue? I think the RBI has put it every statement. Uh, you know, Dr. Acharya has made a comment as well. Has the RBI sensitized the government to the fact that it's not just capital for growth that they need? There's still a large amount of provisioning requirements that are going to come in. Uh, and is the RBI open to something like recapitalization bonds if they can't find the money within the budget, sir? I'll request uh, Mr. Vishwanathan. Yeah, the, the discussion on the capitalization of uh, public sector banks is an ongoing one with the government. Um, the need for capital for all requirements, including the minimum capital required for growth, has been underscored. And as far as instruments are concerned, all instruments will be considered. <coughs> Mint? Uh, Governor, you spoke about um, reinvigorating the whole investment uh, climate, and also you've said that uh, the GST has delayed the revival of investment activity. When do you really see the whole private private investment picking up? Yeah, it's a it's a little hard to uh, precisely project this. Uh, so one has to rely a little bit on evidence in. Uh, other parts of the world where such significant deleveraging of corporate and uh, banking sector balance sheets have taken place. Uh, what uh, history seems to suggest is that you need both deleveraging to take place. Uh, it's important for corporates to delever or the borrower, uh, whichever segment of the economy is heavily indebted to delever. But it's also important for financial intermediaries to have the capital both for financial stability and for growth, as was just mentioned. Um, as DG Vishwanathan said, we are working quite hard on uh, uh, on on getting some traction uh, on the second front. On the first front, we are directing uh, cases to the insolvency and bankruptcy court to push through that resolution. Uh, my sense is this whole process could take anything from 12 to 18 months as a whole. Of course, uh, investments may revive even earlier along the way because once uh, deleveraging takes place, some consolidation might take place in some of the indebted sectors, capacity utilization might improve. Uh, when exactly that takes place is a little hard to predict, but I think what we can do is to structurally set the stage right so that whenever growth impulses are there, the economy is positioned correctly to amplify those. I mean, just to add to that, um, uh, you know, at the one instance where we could see um, investment reviving is that as the capacity utilization rates uh, uh, go up uh, in those sectors which are creditworthy. It's not that uh, uh, all sectors are suffering from over leverage uh, and, and, uh, and poor balance sheets. Uh, there are lots of sectors where this is not binding. And there it's basically that as capacity utilization picks up, uh, we would see investment proposals uh, uh, come in. Okay, thank you.